So today is the fifth day of Improvement Hell. I actually did some extended day four since there were some other parts of the human anatomy that I wanted to focus on. But today we are drawing gesture drawings of people. So I'm trying to get this open. Silhouettes. And they're supposed to be small and fast. So I was thinking, why not use the Dan Berry pointed pen that Joseph gave me for Christmas? So I'm just using Sumi ink and my dip pen and I will go ahead, I guess, and get started. So something I noticed about this pen is that it has a really gestural bold line and I thought that would lend itself really well to just some very loose silhouettes. I have to do 20 of them so I may have to do them smaller than this. And this is um, Canson Biggie XL mixed media paper. It's not my favorite but it's cheap and I'd purchased a little pad of it as part of the Walmart art supply review series. So I figured. So the only problem I can see is that this, first of all, I'm putting down a lot of ink on here. Like it looks great, but there's a lot of ink. Um, so it's going to take, you know, a billion years for it to dry. The other problem is they want a variety of body shapes. And I am totally into that. One of the uh, on several of my anatomy focus days, I try to do plus size and I even made like bellies and breasts the focus of a couple of my days. So I am totally into that. And I think it's an important thing to study. The problem is that usually with these sort of, um, with like photography reference, you only find like super fit people, like people who could, do not seem to exist in real life. So I'm gonna have to figure something out on that because I do definitely want, actually I know the solution to that. I follow a yoga person who happens to be plus size. So that should work out pretty well. Let's see if I can get that. Let's see if, all right, got it, awesome. So I do now have a variety of shapes to draw. Now I'm still stuck with my original problem of uh, I filled up that page too fast and I guess I could remove this from the book or I could work in like two or three books at one time. I'm going to try, I guess, and do some like really tiny sketches. It's just a shame because this one turned out well, but I shouldn't, I should try not to be so precious about these sort of things. And when you're doing these sort of silhouette forms, these can be really great for studying motion, understanding gesture, and you know, just getting a little more um, vibrancy and motion in your sketch sketching. Um, and it's really just important to focus mostly on the line of movement. Try to have everything moving in that direction. Excuse me. And don't get too precious over things. If you failed one gesture, you can redraw it. Like this guy here got kind of blobby because I'm trying to draw him small with a pointed pen that does not really want to draw small. And these sort of challenge exercises are a great time to practice with materials and media that you're not always comfortable with. The way I see it, you got to put a certain amount of mileage in before you're proficient at something and that goes for art supplies as well. So these are, this is a great opportunity to put some mileage in, in a low fail situation. I'm trying to work more from the point because that's how you get the finer lines. For those of you who are pursuing an art education at home via School of Internet, I do highly recommend that you find some of these challenge uh, prompts and just work your way through it, especially the Improvement Hell 30 Day Challenge that I'm currently working on is pretty much like art school in a nutshell. 
something you are missing or will be missing that you can't replicate that School of Internet is not going to do a good job of filling in for you though, is guided practice where someone who knows what they're looking at gives you advice on what you're doing wrong. It's huge. Uh, the lack of that when I was in high school and early college, because even though I went to school for an art education in undergrad, it doesn't mean I had professors who necessarily felt like teaching. It was particularly true in my Hypermedia classes just did not feel like, they just did not feel like teaching. Um, and it's why my art stagnated for like 10 plus years. Because even though I was drawing every day and I was um, pursuing exercises and stuff, I didn't have any guidance and I didn't have critique that was aimed to help me improve as an artist. Um, for the most part, UNO was more focused on like fine art so if you could like if you could lie a good concept for why you did what you did you'd get a better grade than if you necessarily executed it well and there are a couple of professors who did not buy into that whose classes I really enjoyed um, but if you find that you're falling into that you really need to try and find a group which can actually critique your work on a technical standpoint Okay, so this page is almost full. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are quick. When I was doing the, um, the day four challenges, I did torsos as one of my challenges and um, it just would not end. It took literally all day to draw those 20 torsos because um, there's just, I was trying to draw all the muscle groups and I was trying to get everything really in place. So I need to step away for a little bit because this pin puts down a lot of ink, but it does put down some really neat um, gestural marks, which I really enjoy. Um, so I'm going to step away and let this ink dry so I can, you know, continue to make progress. So I'll see you guys. This will feel like nothing to you, but I'm saying this because I don't want you to think I just like flip the page. Oh, magic. It's not magic, especially if you're watching this video to see how that pointed or um, how the folded pen handles. Um, it puts down so much ink, which is fine, but that makes for such a long dry time. And it's why I opted to do these in in a mixed media sketchbook rather than in a normal sketchbook. So I'm gonna let these dry and then I'll be back. All right guys, so these inks have mostly dried. They're dry enough that I can flip the page over. There's still some wet spots, so I don't want it sticking to anything. So let me carefully flip that page over and I can start working on the next batch. The feeling this is gonna end up taking me all day because of my choice of medium, but I guess that's okay. So uh, um, note that I am just sort of hashing these figures in because today's challenge is on silhouette. So it's perfect opportunity to just use sort of rough gestural strokes to accomplish that. Of course, I didn't plan quite as well as I should have. I ran out of room. Now, if you're thinking about this, not from a skill building point of view, but from a part of ugh, a portfolio point of view. Um, I can't really say that these sort of exercises are useful for anything other than maybe like graphic design assets. So if the only reason you're doing these sort of exercises is to build up um, like a hiring portfolio, not a school portfolio, because I think um, a lot of art schools are interested in this sort of stuff, then, you know, it's not really gonna help you meet your goal, but I do think they're good practice. They're certainly fun practice and they're a great opportunity to, oh, big boo-boo there. Um, a great opportunity to play with materials, like I said earlier, that you wouldn't otherwise, hmm, wouldn't otherwise play around with. And you could use these as assets for something else later on. I just don't want you thinking that doing a bunch of silhouetted motion studies is gonna get you that dream gig. Maybe if you were an animator, I wouldn't actually know about animation. Also, sometimes when we're doing figure drawing, we under 
represent just how extreme certain movements and gestures are. We take away, you know, the life from our sketches because, you know, we're trying so hard to use construction and anatomy and all the things we've been taught that we don't really take into account just how flexible some bodies are. So these sort of silhouette studies are a great chance to sort of remedy that and to really push how cartoony you can get. So again, we have a very, very wet page that I am going to let dry. I have to step away from that. So I'm cleaning my folded pen, I'm wiping it down. I don't want to let the ink dry in there. And I think next time I see you guys, we'll start working on some of the plus size studies since we did, since part of it is um, figures of all sizes and that is an important thing to study. All right guys, so it's been over an hour and my ink is still not dry. So I'm going to need to set up a bit of a buffer. I'm gonna use just this little bottle of Copic Opaque White. That way I can go ahead and turn the page, keep on working, um, and I'm not gonna get my pages stuck together. Now this will only work for one page, but I mean, you know, one page is still progress. So now it's time to add a little bit of variety to our bodies in motion. And I'm going to start off with some yoga. I, I know I draw a lot of yoga, mostly because it's just such interesting shapes, you know, sort of movements that we don't normally get an opportunity to render. And I think I'm gonna be drawing too big on this one and run out of space again. So we're doing silhouettes. So I need to fill. And if you're using a folded pen like this for sketching, you really don't want to bear down hard. You just want to do light. I'm just trying. Supposedly, if you use the side, it can put down a wider line, but I'm not seeing that on this one. I'm gonna run out of space, of course. We kind of saw that coming, didn't we? a headstand and note that regardless of body shape I'm pretty much approaching this very similarly in that I am blocking major shapes I'm trying to not really worrying about you know anatomical correctness anything like that just trying to get the basic gesture down trying to loosen up it's always a problem of mine All right, so I'm gonna run into a problem here where my two poses are going to run into each other. I'm kind of working on too small surface to be drawing at this size. And I am really laying down a lot of ink since I'm drawing my figures a little bit bigger. I should really be working on them a little bit smaller. So I have a pretty stupid confession for you guys. If I'm drawing from photo reference, I will usually draw my referenced image, uh, whatever I'm referencing at about the same size that it appears on the screen. It's hard for me to, to sort of resize things. I'm gonna try to resize things now though. I guess because my brain goes into a different mode. I'm not really sure. Ran out of room. See if I can't sneak some small ones in there. Those are the ones that really give me the most trouble, you know. When I'm doing figure drawings, I tend to use the same, not this size, a larger one actually, but I tend to use the same size sketchbook every time one of the nine by 12s with the spirals at the top. So I get really stuck in my ways. It seems really comfortable to draw things all, always at about the same ratio. It's hard for me to shrink things down. It's another reason why it's good 
to just go ahead and sort of change things up when you're doing these sort of challenges. Okay, so <laughs> there is so much ink on this page, it's gonna take forever to dry, but I'm going to let this dry and continue working. And hopefully the other page will have dried too by the time this Swamp O ink has had a chance to dry. So these are also not dry and actually this sheet behind it is not really dry either, but I'm gonna go ahead and flip it down and just only put um, that sort of spacer where I have a little bit of room to spare because I don't really want this taking the rest of my life to finish. These dry times are killer. Let's try this time to do some smaller studies, especially since that is something I have difficulty with. And go ahead and load up that pointed pen. And things I'm focusing on when I'm doing these sort of studies is you wanna think about, um, I think of it like long and short. So you're basically staggering your curves and your straight lines. So we've got the long curve and then the multiple short curves right there. And that sort of helps when drawing and designing more dynamic figures. Of course, you know, it hasn't all the way trickled into my comic art yet because I'm still way more focused on telling the story and it's something I'm still kind of internalizing. So it's taking me a little bit longer for it to work its way in. That's okay. You know, that's why you do, you know, copious studies because it has some people like myself takes, takes a really long time for me to start doing things naturally. Um, I'm like constantly having to remind myself to do things. So, you know, the more practice you put in, the more it becomes second nature, the easier it gets. That's why I so highly recommend uh, practicing figure drawing, regardless of whether or not you think um, you really need to understand like realistic versions of, of how the human form works. You still need to put the practice in because it'll make you a stronger artist and it'll trickle into your your regular work. And sometimes, I mean, your, your art goes through like a really ugly phase. I'm just gonna like hint at her leg so it doesn't cross the other figure I drew. Um, sometimes it like, your art is kind of ugly and awkward while you're integrating new skills and you're, you're figuring it out. And the best way you can solve that is just to draw a lot and uh, sort of let it work its way through your system her a little bit larger than I intended to. I'm trying to conserve space so I can get all 20 of my studies down. These are silhouettes, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of an outline so I can see that that's where the arm was. Okay, so you know how I talk about um, I often talk about like wanting to keep my hands clean. That's because with me, as soon as my hands get dirty, it starts to get everywhere. And uh, I have not yet embraced the grunge. All these handstands and those poses are just gorgeous. Even if I run them off the page, unfortunately. Let's try it really tiny, which is probably really what I should have been doing instead of so large. I think if I were turning this into a professor, they would be tired of looking at my giant drawings. Why didn't you do it all on one page? Hmm. And drawing small with an instrument like this is also kind of a challenge. So lots of pushing today, lots, hopefully lots of growth. Reap those rewards later on. And I don't know if you are like me, but um, when I'm working on these sort of challenges, sometimes I have a really hard time because um, I'll get like about halfway in, I'll put about half the time in, and I will feel like nothing 
has changed, you know. Um, and I talked about this on Twitter. I was really honest about it too. Um, really, what I'm hoping will change is part of the reason I do these sort of exercises, yeah, of course, to improve as an artist. But I really hate where I am with my career right now. Um, I really hate how things seem to be getting worse rather than getting better. So, you know, the only thing I can change is um, things within my control and doing body practice studies, challenges, trying to show a range of diversity in what I can do. That's something I can control. That's something um, that is within my power to change. I can't change who necessarily looks at things. I can't change what they think about the things that I do. I can't change. There's some, I, at this point in time, I can't really change where I live. I live in an area that's just not does not provide opportunities for comic artists, doesn't provide a lot of opportunities for illustrators. And uh, I moved here, I'm not from here, so I don't even know people, you know, I can't like call up all my old teachers and be like, hey, can I come talk to your class? Like that's all closed doors for me, that's not available. And those are all avenues that other people would be able to utilize. Um, I can't control any of those things, you know? Um, and that is, <laughs> frustrating on its own, but I can control drawing a lot and I can control sharing that. And I, you know, those are things I can't control. But when I, now I'm drawing really tiny gestures or trying to, trying to get a bunch of them in the page. Um, when I do these challenges and I put like a really honest effort in for like the first 10 days, like really solid effort. I know I'm on day five, but I also spent four days doing stuff for day four. So I've been done this challenge for about um, 10 days now. And I think it's a great challenge. I think there is a lot of potential for portfolio building. And I think a lot of potential if you can't afford art school and you want some of the fundamentals that you would have otherwise gotten if you had attended art school. I think this challenge is a great free way to get that done in 30 days, to get some of that in 30 days. Um, but it hasn't changed my life at all. And I know, uh, like when I say it, it's just like, well, duh, it's a 30 day challenge. Why would it change your life? Well, you know, I feel like for me, I can't divorce myself from the hope that things will be different. That's why I try doing so many things. I review so many products. I, I do comics and I do conventions and I do the YouTube and I do the blog and I do all of them all of the time because I'm always hoping something will change and nothing ever changes. Um, so I'm really working on just doing these exercises with an eye to improving myself and improving my art and divorcing myself from, trying to divorce myself from caring whether anybody sees it, whether it leads to anything, whether it changed anybody's mind on what I'm capable of and what I'm not capable of um, because I tend to get sort of typecast a lot because I do, I wanna do kid stuff and I want to do um, cute stuff. So that tends to have other other people, other artists tend to think you're less sometimes for wanting to do that. Like it's like easy mode or something, or like you don't, somehow don't need to know the fundamentals. Um, so, you know, it would be super if these sort of things did change minds, but it isn't changing any minds in my life. And that can get kind of discouraging. But you know, I mean, you also, I also should caveat that with like, I've done hundreds of pages of watercolor comics. I've done hundreds of conventions. I've done hundred, really hundreds, maybe 100 conventions total so far. I usually do like 13 a year. Um, but I've done a lot of conventions. I've met a lot of people. We've interviewed a lot of people and like nothing seems, nothing seems to click. Nothing seems to take off. So, you know, I'm working on not doing these things to impress anybody and not doing these things to improve anything other than my drawing ability. And that's hard for me. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm not a young kid anymore. Um, I'm not in school. I don't have the benefit of time. You know, people tend to look more fondly on the 18 year old who's struggling to find themselves and the 30 year old who's struggling to find themselves. So, um, you know, 
I there's definitely reasons why I want things to start to gel and uh, there's also frustrations because when I graduated from SCAD things were starting to gel and then the economy changed and the comic book industry changed and people just don't have the money to spend at conventions anymore and like things just seem to keep getting worse and uh, so I'm always trying new things and they're not really making a significant difference and I'm just trying not to be depressed over that and I anyway don't do these sort of challenges with an eye on impressing somebody just because you post them on Instagram or just because you post them on Twitter or Tumblr or wherever um, it's great if it does like that's great I am I am honestly jealous of you that's great but don't do it expecting that because what you're going to you're going to cheat yourself out of what you could be getting out of it which is actual solid art improvement a better understanding of the human body time spent drawing developing motor skills trying new things and pushing yourself those are all valid important things too and if you put an honest effort when you do these sort of exercises you will get those things the other things the attention changing people's minds uh, job opportunities opportunities to teach opportunities to work those are all things you can't control. Those are all outside factors that all you can do is your best and hopefully it will gel. So, um, yes. See, these are starting to actually run a little bit because they're so heavily pulled. Just kind of a shame. It's a good thing I took a photo of it. Um, I am going to put a smaller spacer because such a thick spacer is definitely causing a problem. And I'm going to step away and give these time to dry. See, I've already got ink spots over there. And I think, I think I've probably hit 20, um, maybe even 10 on this page alone. And I'm pretty satisfied with how these look. I felt like this exercise was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. And I really enjoyed the line and gesture my pointed, I mean, my folded pen uh, gave me. And you can get your own folded pen like this uh, from Dan Barry, who is a UK comic artist, makes these. And I think his handle is Things by Dan, but you can check out my description below and I'll post the link. I did already record a review of this, like a little demonstration overview thing, um, where I talk about where you can find them and I can talk about how this handles. So um, if, this, if you enjoy these marks, if you want to give this a try, and I do recommend you give it a try, check out my description below for a link to that product. I don't see any kickback. Uh, we do not know each other at all, but I am always into supporting other comic artists who make things, be it comics, yeah, but also thing things like art supplies. I think that's really cool and that's something I'd like to do at some point in my life. So thank you guys so much for watching this day five uh, silhouette demonstration. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it useful. If you have any comments, let me know in the comments below. If you would like me to um, demonstrate a specific pose for you guys or a specific type of drawing or something, let me know that as well. I am always interested in creating content that helps you guys out. And the only way I can know what you need is by you leaving a comment. I hope you will check out my other Improvement Hell videos and hopefully we can grow together. So have a great day, guys, and I will see you again really soon. Bye.